Hello. 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 I'm just giving Bell some mic facts real quick. Go for it. Um, I was just saying, so it owning a ribbon mic is scary because <laughs> ribbon mics use an actual ribbon of gold that is very, like, very thin. And some ribbon mics can be destroyed by the phantom power that a condenser mic would use. So, like, if you accidentally turn on phantom power with a ribbon mic in, it can destroy it. Which is kind of kind of a horrible thought when they cost, like, upwards of a thousand pounds. Jesus. Yeah, All we right. have some, some mics with a gold... Hey, ah, uh, yes, Mike Nerds. Yeah, quite, Shatter. Uh, Robin Bassett, Shatter, um, Pickle. On, welcome to the stream, guys. Welcome to the Dungeon Discourse. We skipped last week uh, because of, uh, of a multitude of, of shit, really. But we're here to talk about both the latest episode of Dungeon Select, uh, episode 11, called Eldilon Scripts, as well as the Halloween one shot that we did uh, past Sunday, uh, The Horror Within. Both of those me. felt really long ago. <laughs> Uh, joining me, I have Belle and Duke to discuss all of these things. Um, but first, before we start, uh, some announcements. As the bot has already put in chat, throughout the month of November, we're we'll raising money for Special Effect together with the Level Select community, the community that we are a part of. Um, special Effect is a great charity based in the UK that make uh, custom gaming setups for uh, people that aren't able to play video games the normal way uh, because of whatever disability or, or injury or whatever they may have suffered throughout their life, causing them to not be able to use mouse and keyboards or normal controllers to play their video games. Uh, they make it so that gamers with disabilities can still enjoy games, which is something close to all of our hearts because we all love playing games, whether it's tabletop or video games. Um, so the entire month of November, the entire community is putting their hands together to raise money. We are very close to raising a thousand pounds already in our first week. I think we're like 30 odd quid away. So if you have some <clears throat> spare pennies, normally we have like overlays and stuff that show like the donation total and all that stuff. But for the D&D type of content that we do, um, doesn't really fit. It's a, it's a bitch to like make that look good combined with, excuse me, the camera setups and all that stuff. So um, the aesthetic the, there is, is a, too important. Exactly. There is a panel down below. That will link to the donation page on Tiltify. There is a link if you type exclamation mark charity in chat that will get you to the Tiltify as well as a special effect website if you want to look up some more information on what they do. Um, so let's raise some money for charity, y'all. There's a bunch, yeah, of, uh, dude. a bunch of wacky incentives um, for all uh, for spread throughout the community of, of things that um, we'll do at certain um, donation goals. Uh, I need to eat a spicy pepper on at a thousand, so we're thirty pounds ish away from having that happen. So if you want to see me suffer and want to raise money for a good cause, get your wallets out, boys. <laughs> right. Uh, secondly, next Wednesday, November tenth, I'll be running a one shot here on the DS channel uh, with some people that aren't uh, with with one member of the core cast, and the rest of them are all community members. Uh, more information on uh, what exact module we're running and all that will be announced through uh, the Twitter and the uh, Level Select Discord. Uh, speaking of Discord, we'll have an announcement to make soon. Um, we'll have something to reveal uh, this Sunday. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I think that's that's my announcements. If I'm if I looking at my looking at my cheat sheet here. Uh, oh right, one more announcement. Uh, we did a poll regarding some some player made NPCs. Um, and Strawpole glitched out completely and did not count like half of the votes. So instead of running a poll again, I'm just going to make it so that all three NPCs show up. So everybody wins. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, my God. He rigged it all along. <laughs> he broke the Strawpole chat. <laughs> no, Strawpole oh dead ass. Like, bro, I got messages from like 10 different people that are all like, I voted, but uh, it's it not showing work. up. And so I don't yeah. know what happened to Strawpole. Next time we run a poll, I'll use a different platform. Um, so instead of running the nice. poll again, I'm just going to include all three of the community made or uh, all uh, three you of the can just, NPCs. I guess it. use a built in Twitter poll. Yeah. Twitter poll or like, um, could even run a poll in Twitch chat, I guess. Right. That's also a thing if you want to do it like super short term. So yeah, that's very yeah, short. Next time we do polls, I'll, I'll do it some different way. So to make up for straw poll breaking, all three of the NPCs get a place in the world, dude. Fuck it. I'm, I'm actually Okay. I'm very happy about that for one reason in particular, and that is that 
One of the NPCs is <laughs> a the pet of a sky giant pirate. Yeah, uh, right? Aracocra, who functioned as like the parrot of a storm giant's pirate. Yeah. And the character that Bell and I came up with yeah. was a triton who found a star map dropped by a pirate. And we could easily tie those together, dude. We could. Like, we could. We could. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all three of the NPCs will show up. Um, the sea mommy. This, it feels like when you have like a primary school like sports day and everyone gets a prize. No participation no awards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I it wasn't planning on this, but because Strawpo broke, I'm like, fuck it, dude. Fuck it. Everybody wins. Who cares? Uh, the world is still empty as fuck anyway, because it's a completely new continent. That I, it's like only 5% filled in, if that. So fuck it. I, there's room for all three. Heckin' frick it, bro. Um, so yeah, those are my announcements. Do you guys have anything to announce before we get going? No. Not really. No. Very I got well. a, I got a new chair and a new mic, but I mean that's uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> <laughs> it? Looks professional as fuck, dude. That mic looks 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 pro as fuck. Uh, also, I like, dude. I like the way the chair looks too. I don't know. It matches the hat. I mean, it just kind like, of I, like <laughs> it has that like gamer chair like aesthetic, right? Like that's you know what I mean, like the shape. The old that. one did, but like it didn't. This is very neutral. Like my last one was red and black, and like nothing like matched that. that. Whereas this stuff. is like just... it's, it's very much like gamer chair shape. You know what I mean? Like all those gamer chairs have like a similar like. Oh, the racing chair shape. Yeah. Yeah, the racing chair uh, meme. Does your have like a little pillow by your neck, or is that not? Yeah, a... yeah there it is. See, there it is. Does and have, the lumbar. Also have like a pillow pillow by your... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That, um... My last chair did as well. Like mm -hmm. the, the my old chair, but it was just like. Remember when I had that gaming chair Sheet. and then you came to visit and it was, it was you, you looked at it and you were like, dude, that chair is busted. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. have that chair anymore. Dude, this chair that I'm sitting on, dude, mm -hmm. good fucking chair. My grandparents like bought it on an auction of like an office that like went bankrupt and they had to sell all their shit. This is like a 400 euro yeah. chair and they bought it for 100 yeah. euros. And dude, it is you... a comfy fucking chair. It's sturdy as heck. And it can carry me, and that's a lot of weight. So that's if nice. you think gaming chairs are expensive, yeah, just search like ergonomic office chair, yeah, and you, yeah, will, this one, you will lose your mind. This yeah. one is ergonomic, and I got it as part of my like student financing for mm -hmm. being disabled. And um, this desk chair is meant to cost two and a half grand. Yeah, Excuse like me? what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, it's electric. It's like part electric, but fucking yeah, it's meant hell. To cost, like, two and a half. It like it goes like up and down electronically. It just goes up. Oh, that's kind of sick, actually. <laughs> that's kind of dope. Up and down. <laughs> that's that's wild. It's a great Jesus chair, Christ. though. It's a, oh, I can I see why. By the way, don't look brand. at my chins, okay? I'm very, you know, when I have like little facial hair going on, it distracts from the fact that, that I have like a chin. Uh, but now it's not there, so don't look, don't look at me. Oh, okay. you look great. You look great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I I was, you know, clean shaven Dutch is is chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. I something jumped to mind that I also wanted to like bring up, and then you started talking about you, like we started talking about chairs, and now I'm, I've forgotten about it. Um, maybe it'll maybe it'll come back to me. I don't know. Um, but let's talk. Uh, let's talk nerdy. Let's talk D and D. Talk nerdy to mm. me. Um, we'll talk, we'll start talking. Uh, we'll, we'll start discussing the, the the Halloween stuff because that's still fresh on our brains, and I'm sure. You both have lots to say about that because I know Duke in particular is a big fan of like the cast of characters that got played. Um, yeah, of course. That session. Uh, there were some. There, there were some good characters. Look at like God. I got the hiccups. Sorry. There were six good characters. <laughs> what? <laughs> that sounded so like. I don't know. It's just, there were six good characters. Like. <laughs> yeah, they just... were all good. Like, what do you? <laughs> It sounded like there was going to be like a part two to that sentence. Yeah. You know, there were six good characters, but you know what I mean. No, um, there's no but. What no, do you mean? That's what it sounded like. I'm sorry. Okay. Like, fuck. Um, yeah. So we ran the horror within last Sunday, uh, and we had a guest. We had Vincent on, who will also be here this coming Sunday, uh, hey. because the intention for him to, was to guest on uh, Dungeon Select Campaign Two. Uh, this the, the, this next uh, session, and then Soko had to dip out of the Halloween one because of uh, personal circumstances. And I was like, Yo, Vincent, you want to just fucking play during the Halloween one as well, dude? Fuck it. 
and he was down. And um, I and he also playing D and D with Vincent. I, I he I brought together Vincent a really great Halloween outfit, very <laughs> short notice. So uh, I Vincent can do no wrong for me. I don't know what it is. I just I just I just love the dude. So I I played some D and D with him off stream uh, like a, like a year ago or something, like a short lived little campaign that kind of died out. Um, not even a year ago, like half a year ago or some shit. And uh, oh, obviously, you and me, Duke, we met him on GTA Roleplay. That's how we. Yeah. That's how we met. So like, he's a role player, yeah. and uh, he loves D and D. So I was like, yes, I want him. He didn't get a chance to to guest last campaign, so I knew for a fact that I wanted him to guest this one. And it's happening, and I'm excited. Uh, we're gonna talk about his character literally after this um, for for Sunday. So it's gonna be a good time. He already told me what he's gonna be playing, like what race and what class and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. I know exactly. How I want to implement um, him. Yeah. It's going to be a good ass fucking time. So, uh, The Horror Within, a one shot that uh, ran a group of characters through a theater, the Monvo Theater, uh, where a show was performed on opening night of The Horror, the horror Within, uh, the same name as the one shot itself, where uh, a lot of people that visited went completely mad got forced to do all manner of things, uh, different types of madness, depending on um, how long they were exposed to the whispers of Shigolg in the back of their head. Um, some people straight up just died of heart attacks. Some people got turned to, to, to just choke the life out of uh, a city guard. Some of them got turned into gibbering mouthers slimy some balls of of, slimy balls of goop some of them got turned into a of, of bottle of acid and eyes um yeah um six characters got recruited by uh the wife of a professor who is an expert in the occult arts um because that professor had gone mad and she wanted someone to solve it uh, as the investigative units sent in by the City Watch had gone missing. Um, that's where you came in. You went in, discovered there was a lot wrong with the place, uh, <laughs> met some crazy, wacky characters along the way that suffered from all kinds of different madness, and you also got exposed to certain levels of madness um, throughout the one shot. Basically, uh, you had sanity points equal to your wisdom score, and oh. every time there, it was like scripted, like, oh, if characters see this, make them roll a wisdom saving throw. And if they fail, um, roll 1d4, and that's the amount of sanity points they lose. And for each amount of sanity points they lose, there was like a, a, a punishment. And if you lost all your sanity points, that's when the indefinite madness came in. And that that happens, d4 must have really fucked me. Yes, I rolled like two fours and a three on yours or some shit like that. Like, I, I you went through your sanity points real quick. Really fucking yeah, it fast. Was, it was nuts. Yep. Um, which, uh, I don't know. I think that was really cool. I liked the idea of, like, not having to tell you, you know, what, how many sanity points you have yeah. and, all, and all that stuff. Uh, it was a cool mechanic. There's, there's different D&D settings that do, like, a madness mechanic, Curse of Strahd being one of the most famous ones that, that does that. Um, it's cool, man. It's cool as fuck. It's cool as shit. I love that shit. And I'm a big fan of, of, like... Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian horror. So whenever there's like some eldritch being being summoned, I'm like, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love that yeah. shit. Um, what are your overall thoughts some... on that? On, on that one shot in particular? Like, just how did you did you have fun? How did you experience it? My greatest complaint <clears throat> was that we took it quite slow and then kind of had to rush the end. Yeah, yeah, we were in a bit of that's time really crunch. it. Um, so the last boss, I did have to like kind of nerf him on the fly. Um, yeah, because if he uh, used his full potential, he would have started like flying eighty feet up in the sky, or not eighty feet, but like up to the ceiling, so that a lot of you wouldn't be able to reach him. And just fucking lay beams on you from the from a distance, and um, but he didn't because we were in a bit of a time crunch. But so decided, okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to gonna have to nerf him a bit so that uh, Laura can go do D can go do Halloween stuff. <laughs> yeah, so so <laughs> it is what it is. For the sake of my own conscience, if he was at full strength mm -hmm. you know it probably was a good idea to completely melt every single one of those uh humans yeah, that were because those, mouthers, because um, those mouthers i nerfed as well because yes they are squishy mm. 
but they normally if you would have started your turn in there uh in like a 15 feet like within 15 feet of one of them uh you had to make like a saving throw and or else like right. you wouldn't be able to move you would have disadvantage on things like they had a lot of like nasty side effects mm. that i decided to cut as well but um i think yeah. i was a little i think I think all of us were a little apprehensive to go in in the first fight as well, so we saved a lot of stuff. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I would, I would read, I would replay that at full strength again, I, just to see how it would go down, because I'm sure, mm -hmm. like, I'm sure it would be a fucking hard fight. Yeah, it's uh, he's he's a, he's a, he's a toughie, especially because yeah, he just has an 80 foot flying speed and he can like fly up to the ceiling and just make it so that he shoots fucking star beams out of his ass. Well, yeah. basically, the only the rangers can really hit him. Uh, so, like, the melee boys would have been fucked. And, yeah, th there was a lot of um, difficulty. I, I, we we, we would have had some fun stuff. Like, I, I oh, everyone yeah, sure. had, to some degree, I think, at least the ability to climb or fly or jump very high. So, like, I, that would have definitely been interesting. Yeah. Um, the uh I, I loved everyone's characters i absolutely obviously fucking love the characters that i played with koiba yeah that was, and that was cool. it was just was after like the a fact gimmick, you know, a cool gimmick yeah and after the fact like the basically theory crafting with everyone else who was involved like the only people who will be alive in a hundred years is drusilla Hello. laura's character and waldo yeah, this character. Out 200 years before campaign one 200 yeah but yeah so, so Drusilla, because of the fact that what was she again a dampire a dampier who are pretty much in, in war, immortal i think and, and if um war so are maintained robots. they yeah. never die either so yeah so they could, in they, theory they could be roman they could show up for all we know yeah yeah, true. yeah yeah they could show up um yeah <laughs> i i i didn't get Obviously, I, I was very, very, like, I was very into the whole flavor of the, the, the character combo. Like, I thought that was, that was so sick. much fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, the <clears throat> subclass, I was playing a, a Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, I think it's called. And, like, there's there's some interesting bits here and there that I, I didn't get to use. Like, he gets a shield. Um, it's, it's like Bastion of Order or something where you spend Sorcerer Points... And each sorcery point you spend gives you a shield of 1d8. So you can spend three sorcery points and have 3d8s worth of shield and then spend them like as you see fit. And oh. I didn't even use that. That's like one of the core abilities of that of that subclass. Um, and obviously like one of them is the, one of the things that comes with the subclass is like the classic roll on a table and you have one of these effects mm -hmm. just passively so like the there's like cogs floating around like the whole the whole thing was pretty cool <clears throat> and we didn't really get into many people's backstories obviously because it was just it's a one shot it was just like go do thing yeah kill stuff um but you know the whole the whole idea when we were sort of coming up with why waldo oh, exists yo, yo. <laughs> we hit a thousand oh whoa we hit a thousand dude we hit a thousand. Dude. Hell and yeah. Eat a spicy pepper. Dude, that's sick. I just, I just figured I'd open the fucking... Um, Wait, uh, let me see. Tiltify real quick. We hit a thousand. A thousand pounds and 69 pence is, what is the current... Hey. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. It is. Hell yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just, I just saw that. No, that's like, all oh, good. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Excellent. I don't know what stream oh, yeah, uh, that got donated to, but uh, I think there's, I think Natty's live as well, which is... Uh, cool because he hasn't streamed in a while so yeah. I, was, I was like yo Natty, yeah we, we had a few big donations we had uh 20 21 pounds and 1p from terry and 20 pounds from bp junkrat so big up there you go awesome um yeah so just picking up where i left off yeah sorry um <laughs> cog is a kobold and kobolds like barely smart enough to be playable characters <laughs> Cog's a very smart boy. Like, the whole idea of him being a sorcerer was that basically he, you know, whatever, doing whatever kobolds do, mining and stuff, found this... I can't remember the name of the realm, but th there's, like, a, a, a plane for clockwork beings, basically, and that whole thing. Um, and, you know, he just, like, found a magical artifact from there that in infused well, him... Mechanus? Just, yes. Uh, infused him with this magical power that he then... 
obviously it made him a smart boy and he he took to becoming a bit of a like a tinkerer and making um making warforged uh which is why i have a, one of my feats is uh artificer like what's it called it's like like artificer understudy or something where Maybe. you get a couple know, yeah. of cantrips from that you get a couple cantrips in a first level spell from that class anyway um but yeah so <laughs> the, the name waldo is <laughs> is a, an acronym for weaponized arcane legionary and then he's generation delta which makes him like the fourth generation of these warforged and then type zero because he's essentially the prototype <laughs> but like the whole thing being that he has like this special uh like well we didn't really decide where waldo's like actual magical power came from at all whether it's something that like came from the same thing that uh cog had um and then i literally just i wanted to use the name cog champ because that's fucking <laughs> hilarious so yeah, that's funny so the idea is we that should, basically they did battle bots <laughs> and that's it and cog was <laughs> like the battle bots fucking pilot robot wars for the <laughs> for the british folks um and and waldo was his was his companion so yeah i i really loved and uh, dude I, I really missed... I didn't miss spellcasting, but I love spellcasting. And playing Cog and making picking up the spell list of, mm -hmm. like, I want I want stuff that's going to work with this flavor where, like, you know, it's going to be basically Waldo's going to be the catalyst for all of these different spells and, like, how can I integrate that magically? So, yeah, I, I just love that whole thing. I love the whole concept. And... The the one thing that I was really well, I was I was excited about the museum apparatus, which is an uncommon item, and then I, and then the pearl of power, right? Which is museum apparatus allows you to cast a spell that isn't on your spell list. Okay. Um, you have to make uh, an arcana check and use a spell slot, and then you can cast one of the spells as long as it is on your class's spell list. Even if you don't have it, you can cast that spell. So I had this okay. whole thing where, like, I've got this Pearl of Power, which is essentially just a replenishable spell slot mm -hmm. as an item. And I was like, dude, I'm going to do this whole thing where I'm, like, wearing the Mizium apparatus and it's, like, rigged into Waldo and I'm going to put the Pearl of Power in, like, a battery <laughs> and I'm going to pick up, like, Fireball and, like, throw a Fireball. But I never really got the chance, uh, which is a shame. And Can obviously, always, like... Uh bring it back for another one shot you know yeah i de I, I think i'll have to We're, like whether it's whether it's with koi and we have waldo or not like yeah like we could like i want to integrate any one shots i do i want to integrate in like the history of of the mm. realm that we play dungeon select in uh because it just adds it adds richness to the history of the of the realm you know like oh there were things happening there before yeah campaign one you know because the realm has sweet, been around for lore. yeah lore um you know, call, you know. Uh, next time you do a one shot that you're a part of, you bring Cog back, and maybe this was, you know, before he found Waldo or, or whatever the fuck, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of possibilities for bringing him back for sure. Maybe he'll be riding like a little fucking. Um, I'm imagining like you know, Doctor Eggman rides that like like mechanic like long legs like yeah like, yeah like, yeah like something just like that. Any... You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I see. Well, <laughs> what I'm picturing is something like uh, if if you play like Warhammer Forty Thousand or anything like that. There's there's like orc mech boys, which is just they've just got random electrical shit strapped to them, which the museum apparatus basically is already. So even if I don't have Waldo, I'd just be like geared up in this weird like harness with fucking like or like um uh the the goblin from here's the storm I can't remember his name, but Gazlo with his like weird. Like arms on his backpack I hate that and you shit. Said goblin from here to the storm, not goblin from WoW. That really irks me. Well, if I'd said goblin from WoW, you would have been like, "Oh, uh, Tripper Gallywix." Uh, there is one goblin from WoW in Heroes of the Storm, so that's the easiest way to go. Okay. I'll anyway, I'll I talked for forever. <clears throat> Bell. Bell. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really liked the whole insanity aspect of it. Um. Especially because my character had a very low wisdom score. <laughs> yep, that kind of she thing. Did. <laughs> um, and like being able to play some kind of like fucking monstrous 
character, I could just kind of do as much damage to as I wanted. Which is why I chose Bloodhunter. <laughs> Bloodhunter like, is fucking sick, dude. I, out of all the, it was so good. Out of all the characters I've played, Bloodhunter, my favorite thing, because I literally just made a Witcher. Uh, we played I, in, in, yeah. in Beanie's campaign uh, when that was a thing, and I played a Blood Hunter for a bit. And um, yeah, you, it, she, he was just a witch. He was straight up. He was Gareth of Rivia, and I had the best fucking time. Yeah. It was great. I <laughs> I did um, a mutant, the mutant subclass, I think. And um, yeah, isn't that the one where you can just, make like you can make yeah. mutagens and fucking chug them? Yeah, that's the yeah. same thing that, that I played. Yeah, yeah, too, yeah. yeah. And Without I just helping. tried to make it as kind of kraken like as possible. The yeah, because you play the it. Simic hybrid. Yeah, so which, I could have like um, tentacles and stuff. Is that relatively new, or is has it been around and just kind of yeah. flown under my radar? I think Simic hybrid is fairly new. I think so. I have no idea. Let's have a look. I just was like, oh, see. We'll do Simic that hybrid. one. I haven't done that one yet. Was included in yeah, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, which is a pretty recent book. I think that came out after Tasha. I think. Mm. They're yeah, really, they're, it's a cool race. Like, it, it, it was really cool. Is it? I, I already, I always forget the name of uh, Jax's race. Did it not come out after Tasha? Am I crazy? What the fuck is Jax? Vidalcan. <laughs> Vidalcan, right. Yeah, Simic hybrids humans. can be what? Vidalcan or elves? Yeah, or humans, I think. Which is weird, yeah, like, really... weirdly specific to have Vidalcan in there as well, but. Yeah, it's all like Vidalcan are just comp on. are a fucking uh, Vidalcan are weird, man. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, her whole country. thing is that she got See. mutated like as a Simic hybrid and was like, "Sick! I wonder how far I yeah, can push this." Yeah, because it's like a mixture of, of humanoid, yeah, as mutating. in human elf or Vidalcan, mixed with like yep. animals, right? An animal. Mm -hmm. yeah, or and an there's animal, a whole maybe. yeah, there's, there's like a it's little cool table for like what kind of animal you are. Yeah, that's yeah. cool as shit. Yeah, I had like weird <clears throat> tentacle limbs that I could like grapple someone with. Oh, that's cool. That's fucking cool. Oh, that reminds me of the metamorph in uh, Divinity. Get tentacle lash. Mm. Dude, I had a lot of fun mm. running it. I uh, always enjoy running stuff that isn't mine, just so I can see like, oh, how do other DMs slash like writers do it? Yeah. Um. Gives me a little peek behind the DM screen of other people, uh, which is very cool. Uh, I'm also running uh, Descent into Avernus. Just hit my did the second session um, yesterday uh, with 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 the gang gang, and that's a lot of fun because that's like a a five e like that is a Wizards of the Coast trademark. Yes, yeah. like that is mm. theirs, and that's like you know the end all be all. This is adventures that this is how a D and D adventure has to be written, yeah. quote unquote, right? And it is very cool to see that, like, the way they do things, and, like, I'm always super self-conscious when I'm like, oh, I, 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 these NPCs are here, and I didn't really didn't really give them a lot of details. And then I look in the center of Vernus, for instance, and they they do the same thing. And it's like, oh, okay, so that is normal. Yeah, you just get a very loose idea yeah. of what oh, a... Oh, dope, yeah. awesome, great. You know what I mean? Like, that gives me some some peace of mind. Like, oh, that's, it's, that's fine to do it that way. Okay, cool. Lit. Uh, not every NPC that your crew potentially has an encounter with has to have a rich backstory of like 10 pages. And a family lit, tree and, and that goes back tree. five yeah, generations. Exactly. And, yeah. exactly. Okay. Pog. Nice. <laughs> there are uh, obviously like in a world, it's nice when, when especially NPCs that serve more of a purpose, obviously have yeah. like a more, more of a rich and interesting like backstory in general. Because especially if they're going to spend time with a party or something like that because we're going to yeah. want to talk to them and get to know more about them, right? Yeah. But if it's like tip tavern quest giver, it's like we're not we're not yeah, really like, going to be interrogating like, them like for a, a long time. A good example that I encountered in uh, the Scent of Vernus was uh, we're currently on session two and the, the party isn't like this underground lair of cultists that worship the dead three, so the gods Bane, Bahal, and Mirkul, uh, which is like hidden under a bathhouse. And they find some like prisoners there that are being tortured, and then they kill the guys that were torturing them because they catch them in the act. And and then I and then they started asking like all these questions to the guy that was the prisoner. And I'm like, dude, it's not that deep. It's literally like they gave me the name and where he lives. That's all I have. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> I mean, at I that have... point, like, improv some shit and hope yeah. they never talk to him ever again so that you don't have to yeah, remember yeah, the I mean, shit yeah, that you're exactly improv. what I did. <laughs> yeah. It's like a chair that they encountered in Critical Role Campaign 2. There was just a chair and everyone lost their minds. Like, what does the chair mean? <laughs> it has to have a meaning. No. DM mentioned that there's a chair, therefore it has to be significant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's one of them things. Oh, there was something there was something that was like opposite to that that we encountered in the one shot where like I asked you, I asked you about something and you just kind of glazed over it and I was like, okay, it's not worth worrying about. <laughs> like I don't really remember exactly what it was. I vaguely but... remember what you're, what you're like I remember this, yeah, but I don't know exactly what it was. Or yeah. There, there was just something <laughs> that was like there was this brief interaction where I was like, oh, and I asked, and it was so like non like such a non-factor i was like okay that is, we don't need to worry about that oh the glue maybe i don't think it was the glue no i remember when someone asked if the, any of the glue had gone missing but it and now it was it yeah. was it was something less like conspicuous than the glue because mm. uh, i don't know um if okay i set the curtains on fire yes right what was going to happen if we did, didn't put that out was that in the thing or were you just no, I mean, it, the thing with fire spells is typically the spells spe specify, oh, if it hits anything that's a flammable object, it'll set on fire. I'm like, that's a flammable object. Yeah. Yeah. It'll set on fire. Building made of wood. Uh, yeah, the burning will start to set fire, but hey, it's decrepit and, and stuff already. So like, fuck it. It wouldn't have had that much of a... It wouldn't have had that much significance, but like, yeah, there yeah. would have been a fire and the... the By the time that you guys like... Like, like, get back out of that like underground cathedral bit. There, it might have been a bit harder for you guys to get out because the whole fucking place would have been on fire by that time. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is no biggie. <laughs> was there anything of note in booths one through six? Hold on. Because um, we, yeah, definitely. we went seven through twelve. Uh, I can hit you with the exact details. The way it was, there's two booths in particular. That were yep. like, this is what's in there. And the other booths, uh, they were just like, you just kind of roll, roll on this, roll on this table, roll on this table yeah. of like random things that they could find in the booths. Everything's but covered can... in white ash. Oh, but... you see a symbol that fucks your sanity. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, um, there, you could have found a gold ring with mm -hmm. emeralds in it, worth 80 gold. Uh, you could have found a potion of invisibility. Cool. Um, you could have found the body of a male half elf who gouged his own eyes out. Nice. And that would have uh, required you to make a, a, a wisdom save or lose sanity points. Um, you found the folding paper fan with a peacock on one side and the words the writhing clots written in blood on the other. You found that, I think. Yep. Yep. Uh, a half empty bottle of absinthe. Uh, nice. A fine layer of white ash on everything. Which uh, you did find, yeah. Yeah, the playbill, which you found in uh, the playwright's booth. Uh, the body of a female human with a disturbing grin. That would have also required you to make a wisdom save. Oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of like uh, you know, like a woman dead, but there's just this like Joker like grin on her face. That's kind of. She's just she just died laughing. Uh, right. Binoculars with cracked right. lenses. Cool. Oh, a case of premium them. cigars worth fifty gold. Uh, you found the silver locket with a small painting of Olivia Lang inside, I think. Oh no, I think I don't think you did. You could have found a small did. like locket with like the picture of the wife of the professor on the inside. So that would have basically meant, oh, this was where the professor and his wife, or the professor was seated when he was watching. Yeah, um, kind of thing. Uh, a white mask that covers half the face. Uh, a severed finger with a uh, signet ring. A brooch of shielding, which would have been a magic item for you guys to potentially use in fights and stuff. Oh, that would have been nice. Um, that would have been good. Uh, a hideous symbol scratched on the wall. Um, one of the other boxes, uh, box six, would have had a plaque that said uh, Monvo family on it and on, on its script. So that was like the family that owns the theater and sponsors the theater. That, that would have been the right. specific booth. Um, let me quickly see. Um, yeah, and in 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 that booth in particular. Uh, that's where you would have found the male half-elf who gouged his own eyes out. That was, like, specifically linked to that booth. Right. Um, same as how the playbill was just pure, purely there in the playwright's booth. 
Um, so yeah, you could have found some 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 neat things, some like some like stuff worth money. You could have found a magic. We got, we got, uh, we got what? We got the signet ring. We got the fan, and then uh, like the layer of ash. Yeah. Uh, you found like the, and the, the stabbing fan. symbol or something on the wall. Yeah, the the fan with like the writing cloth on it, and then also the yeah. Yeah, hideous symbol scratch on the wall. Yeah. And then the playbill. So that's six, I think. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah, because we went seven through twelve. Yeah. Seven, eight, nine, yeah, ten, we, eleven, twelve, six. Six. Yeah, but like, yeah, that covers them all, I think. Uh, the, just, dude. When oh man, when Belle's character, I forget her name, uh, was like right. had that had that yes. yeah had that madness of like the next person you see you think or are convinced is like something hiding in like a flesh like a skin suit or whatever the fuck and you found fucking Hildreth the fucking half orc that was like humming songs to herself <laughs> I was like oh god oh no <laughs> oh we didn't even find the other two uh you did the first two gibbering mouthers that you initially fought uh, in that boss fight okay. was them okay so they were already turned into fucking... So the way that works, by the way, is an interesting little tidbit for uh, for you. You know, if you want to know information about Shgolg, fuck it, you might as well. Um, sure. Let's see. So this is the description you get. Mm. A floating mass of black, churning sludge seems to absorb all the light into its inky center. The clot shivers, compresses, and then bursts into a nest of whipping tendrils glowing with stolen starlight. Shigolg is horrifying to behold and, inscru uh, and inscrutable in its will. Its millennia-long plots are not for mortal minds to comprehend. Still, Shigolg is intelligent enough to court and harness other intelligent beings, breaking their minds enough to guarantee their obedience. Once Shigolg is done using its worshippers for its immediate goals, it, com it converts them into, hideous into its hideous children, gibbering pools of slime with mouths and eyes. That's like his like, oh thing, is just... Use the worshippers until they serve their purpose and then turn them into fucking slime balls. Fuck yeah. yeah. Shigolg absorbs power from sources of light, blackening the night sky as it drifts across the outer realms. Its goal is to consume all furnaces of creation in the universe so that the cosmos returns to its inert, darkened state. When the old ones first dreamed, Shigolg will have ascended to the court of slumbering elders, then and will shape the universe anew in its image. It's pretty fucking. That's pretty fucking metal, dude. Not gonna lie. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty metal. I mean, it's 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 that good, that Lovecraftian good, yeah, good. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah, just he's horrifying to look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but he could have used um, as a bonus action. He could have used liquefy, which he targets uh, with his worshippers that he can see within 120 feet of him. That has a CR of two or lower. And is not a gibbering mouther. That creature explodes, dying instantly, and the ichor reforms into a gibbering mouther that acts on Shigolk's turn. But he can only have up to right. five gibbering mouthers up and alive around him. So he can only make more yeah. if oh, the other ones die. Uh, but yeah. So, like, in a way... Like, yes, if you would have killed Shigolk, all the actors there would have been fine. But if you fought him at full potential, he would have almost guaranteed would have turned them all into mouthers anyway so like vitriolic sphere is a fucking awesome spell um that is the big acid ball that i killed them all with mm -hmm. it's oh, sick. Yeah. i it, it is a I, I what was it con, con save and I believe so, it yeah. does 10 d4 damage yeah and like they were using like like just just a normal like you know commoner stat block or whatever yeah it does, it does 10d4 like... damage, which, if they make the save, is halved. And if they don't make the save, it also does yeah. 5d4 damage on the yeah, next they turn. they have four hit points, like, each. Like, that's the <laughs> <it>. So, like... <laughs> but yeah, you're like, so the, so the minimum magic, you can do here is 10. missile has a good chance of killing one. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, yeah. they're squishy as fuck. So, yeah. when, you, you're when, like... when you cast a spell, I was like, yeah, yeah, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was much bigger than I thought it was going to be. But it was like... What twenty foot radius or something like it was a big yeah, yeah, it was huge splash. and was huge. Uh, yeah, I think I, I did roll in the end like just to see how much and then yeah. it came up came up to like twenty three I think yeah so even which, if they would have made all of them would have made the save they would have still all died yeah so like yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck them dude fuck them bro fuck them uh, common a soup 
Mm. Yeah, I really had fun with the Halloween one, and uh, it's kind of making me want to, I don't know, do more of the, you know, the, you hear the sirens, dude? Police, they're coming for me. Um, mm. Polity. Polity. We're talking about the one shot. Can I just say that I really like the edit bell that's for the YouTube? <laughs> dude. Yes. 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 Uh, I love seeing myself with the glasses <laughs> and fedora. It's really great. It's truly, truly a great picture of me. <laughs> really brings out my triple chin that I had back then. I tried to find the one of you on that scooter, but I couldn't find it, so I just used that one. Oh, don't lie to me. That does keep on a motorcycle? No, I did! I literally went back through three different discords. Literally my to find LinkedIn it. banner profile, bro. Dab. Listen, I didn't realize <laughs> that. <laughs> but, um. I also used it in that video. You, you made me edit. <laughs> you are highlights. It's in yeah, there. I love the, the video me. you made me edit. I love that. I, didn't make I you love do shit. that. I didn't no, make I you do shit. Listen. Uh, the oh, fuck. <laughs> I still, I still love that one Baldur's Gate episode where we're fucking just King of the fucking Hill. around. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, the whole like first five uh, minutes is just us fucking around. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, get I'm really away. upset. I saw that map. I saw the map that didn't work. I literally laid eyes on it when you were working on it. And yeah. uh, the fucking it didn't like, work stage and for stuff? no reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. You were there when I was making it. We were like in Discord yep. vibing. I was like, yo, you want a little sneak peek? Yeah, like I made it, it but it just didn't want to show up. The stage and like chairs and all that stuff. Yeah. Question for Duke How does it feel to be part of the Coolio Halloween comedy duo? Hey, Koiba. I mean, I, I, I've already fucking talked ad nauseum about fucking Karg and, and Waldo, dude. I love that shit. And oh, like I said, I, I know I already praised Vincent's fucking costume, but like Koiba everyone was lit. Koiba right? whipping out like 10 different fucking costumes was also like a good one. Was a good yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't feel like anything everyone because there wasn't comedy. Alright, Soko. Everyone nice did bro. a great job on that end. It was it was just a fun, just the whole thing was fun to be a part of. Yeah, uh, it definitely makes me want to do more, like you know, like like holiday one shots throughout yeah. the year. Just like take a little break from the campaign, do something a little more lighthearted, or just something a little different. Um. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I did love, I did love Cog, but there's no, you know, it doesn't, it it still doesn't compare to playing Davian in the campaign. Yeah, oh really yeah, I missed we'll transition. Oh. We'll yeah. transition over to that now. Um, last episode of Dungeon Select. Oh, the wow. Eldilon Crypt. Oh. A, little, a little refresher for you all. Um, Shout out Vecna. After, Vecna! Uh, after getting your uh, quest rewards and all that for dismantling the war effort between the Yuan-Ti and the city of Eldilon and all of its uh, citizens. You're chilling. You're hanging out in Eldilon, but got uh, asked by Father Ackle to investigate some strange noises coming from the crypt underneath the cathedral. Uh, which you did, and it turns out that a necromancer had raised uh, a bunch of zombies. Uh, for what goal, you're not sure. But after defeating the zombies and defeating her, you found an altar that was desec desiccated. Desiccated? Desecrated. Desecrated. Desecrated, yeah. right. Um, where um, a bunch of symbols were scratched on, mainly the cut-off hand with an eyeball inserted in its palm, the symbol of um, Vecna, a lich who is trying his best to ascend to godhood. Uh, and a like a pretty standard figure for necromancers to turn to, to try and gain power. Um, it's been a while. We obviously we took a week break because we did the Halloween thing. Um, but we're going to get back into it this Sunday. Um, the episode ended with fire writing in the sky mm. saying oh, yeah. that uh, the meddlers who's been who've been meddling in in his affairs um meet him in forgot the fucking town name. it was i uh, know i don't know uh meet him in street Shretham, street mm. meet him in street that motherfucker has my <clears throat> stone and, um it's very obvious I that this that. is uh mr yearden fearkrog uh mm. Having caught word that some meddling kids have been getting his his followers arrested, <laughs> um, you saw for a okay. second what you've kind of recognized to be somewhat shaped like a dragon. 
uh, as it flew off into the distance. At least I did. Uh, you did, mm. Davi in particular. Um, and that seems to be kind of the next order of business for the party. If he does have the tier, by the way, that's really fucked up because he's in bed with like two different gods and one is a dragon and one is an elemental and they fought against each other in a war. No, well, like, is not really Eons a god, go. is he? He did fight in the war against the dragons, he though. He did, he did. Like, element he's just a very powerful elemental. I'm really... Dude, I'm going to snitch on Fearcrag so hard. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. You don't know if that's the case. It's no, I... It could be a coincidence. <laughs> it, could be a, it could be a coincidence, but, like, let's be real. I mean, Fire I'm... Fireman I... likes setting stuff on fire has fire gem? Hmm, I don't know. Mm, I but, don't know. but, um, Fireman likes setting stuff on fire in the name of the sworn enemies of oh, the no. man who owns the fire gem. So maybe he doesn't have the fire gem. Maybe it is a coincidence. Maybe. Who knows? But, it, it, I, you know, would it be... No, Davian could put two and two together easily. They're going to... He's called them out to go to Streetham. The next gem is in Streetham. Fireman. I mean, I'm going to call... I'm going to give Kostik a little ring and say, Hey, hey, this guy's doing work for the Dargans. That's kind of fricked up, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but that seems to be the next order of business. And next week, mm. obviously, we... Or next week. This week, this Sunday, we have uh, a guest. We have Vincent, who is going to be playing a part in this next story arc. Um, I think he might be here He's for like, He might be here for like a little while. He might be here for like this entire thing, TBH. Um, yeah, we can f fuck off Siren. Yeah, pretty much Siren like uh, sitting uh, behind an Eldalon and yeah. Vincent kind of takes takes her place as uh, yeah, and the, the party. The party's Elazrin will weep. Elazrin couldn't <clears> cry. <throat> Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, Vincent said he has time like every Sunday because that's like his off days normally. So like, I mean, yeah, depending on how the story goes, he might just be around for a little bit, which is fun. Oh, um, yeah. Typically what we do, right, is like I, I give you like a little tease of like hoo -hoo -hoo, uh, what to expect next session. Uh, yeah. He's here to kick me out. So cold. He's just, he's just going to play Jax. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Probably um, better. <laughs> Vincent's character will be more significant to the party than they might think. I. I'm and that's all. You, that's all that. you're getting. That's all you're getting. As like a little tease. More significant to the party than we might think. Yeah. Anyway, um I bet I bet he I bet he has ties to like I bet he has ties to one character in the party. I I I, I have a feeling. Mayhaps, mayhaps. Ooh. We'll Ooh, find that. out. Um, yeah, Lazarus would be like that. Yeah. That's a good So chance. last time we had, I you know, we we we've, we've been kind of making a habit of putting a little low, low, low game segment in our discourse uh, mm -hmm. episodes. Uh, we started off with uh, trivia, dungeon select trivia. Uh, and then we started off, and then we did uh, creating NPCs together. And now we're going back into trivia, but this time Dungeons and Dragons trivia. We've got questions yeah, prepared so for you, and this is going to be I like a like a. I ask the question. Wait until I'm finished, because sometimes I give you like a selection of. It, sometimes it'll be multiple choice. Sometimes it won't be. Uh, mm. Once I'm done answering. It is literally just the first person to like, to like raise raise their hand or or like yell a yell like ah first person that pipes up gets the answer first. If they answer it wrong, the question will go to the opposite uh, party, uh, so, and they could try and answer the question still. But that's basically how it's gonna go. Okay. 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 So, with that, the first question: Which of the following classes does not? Have a hit die of a D8. Yo, I sorry, I was testing out a buzzer button. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, which of the following classes does not have a hit die of a D8? Warlock, monk, bard, sorcerer, druid. Oh, oh, uh, well, warlock, monk, bard, sorcerer, and monk. Wrong. Bell. Fuck. Oh, um, sorcerer. Correct. Sorcerer is a D6. Yes. That's what I it's thought. It's a D6. I just played a sorcerer. I thought it was a D8. Yeah. Yeah. I would, for some reason, in my mind, D8 was like the lowest. So I was just yeah. like, oh, it's got to be monk. 
<laughs> and I literally just so played this. I, I forgot D6 points. is even an option. Yeah, D6 okay. uh, is for, for Wizard. I think Wizard and Sorcerer are like the only ones that have a D6. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they are. Um, who won the NPC? Well, Strawpole fucked up and didn't count the votes. So all three won. Smile. Um, second question. This is a true or false question. The Sorcerer is the only class that can get spell slots back outside of a long rest. False. False. Duke was first. And that is correct. Warlock. Warlock can also. And Wizard. Warlock uh, gets them back on uh, uh, short rest. Wizards have uh, a certain ability where they can yeah. get one spell back a day or one spell slot back. True. Good job. Or false, I guess. Good job. <laughs> one all. <laughs> Which of the following classes does not have access to the wish spell? Warlock, Wizard, Bard, Sorcerer. Wizard. Wrong. Bell. Fuck. I mean, of course, they have... Yeah, fuck. <laughs> bard. Correct. Yes! Dude, wait! That's so much better than I thought I would Why do I think Bard... The wish spell appears on the Sorcerer and Wizard spell list only, but since the Genie Warlock, they now also, the Warlock now also has access to the wish I spell. I think I just... I guess I just thought Bards have wish because I carried around that fucking Genie forever. The Bards do not have wish on their spell <laughs> list. So, Bell. Two points, Duke, one. What type of damage does a gold dragonborn's breath weapon deal? Fire. Correct. We got hit with one. In, so, yeah, okay. <sighs> bards I wish from lore, but they're not on the bard spell list. And they are on Maybe the Warlock probably, spell list. I was, call I was College of Lore. The Wizard and Sorcerer spell list. They are not the spell wish does not appear on the Bard's spell list. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh so to all. Not mm -hmm. bad, not bad. Okay. <laughs> Here's one that uh I constantly have to suffer through. <laughs> Which school of magic is known as a school of magic that blocks, banishes, and protects? Abjuration. Abjuration. Bell was first, so I'm gonna give it to Bell. We were so close. Bell was first. I'm sorry. I'm gonna to have to be fair here. So it's three oh, two yeah, to yeah. Bell. Now the next few questions is going to be a name that race quick fire round. I'm gonna give you oh, a fact God. about a race, and you just have to decide what race I'm talking about. So we'll start off with an easy one. Race cursed to only speak in mimicry. Um. What is? Fuck. A <laughs> uh, cookery cook cook. cook it's literally on the tip of my tongue, dude. I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds, and if you don't answer within 10 seconds, it's going to Bell. Kiri. Kiri <laughs> is a. Kiri is a. Two. One. Um, fuck it. Bell? Oh, I have no idea what is the name of that fucking thing. It's a blackbird. I know. Huh. Maybe 10 more seconds, Bill. Shit. I'm, I think I got it. No, I don't got it. I'm thinking Arakakura, and that's not it. No. <laughs> but yeah, your turn's over. The, the question went to Bill. All right. Um, the answer no, no. was Kenku. That's it. Oh, that's off, the man. Bitch. God damn. Easy. This is that easy. Would do it. Ke come on. This one is a lot harder. The race that is made of the union of humanity and renegade spirits from the plane of dreams. So fucking excuse me? Um. Made from the union of humanity and renegade spirits from the plane of dreams. What is some weird tiefling? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. What's it called? It's a. It's a uh, not. It's not a very common race. I think I've played one. Maybe ten more uh. seconds, Bell. Oh. oh, I can't remember the name. Eh. Ah. Kalashtar. That's it. Mm. Uh, Primus Dalastari is a Kalashtar. Fun fact of the day. Um, okay, yeah, this one is piss easy. And if Duke doesn't get this, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> okay. Race forced into servitude of mind flayers. 
What is Gith Yankee? Or Gith Zerai? I'd say Gith. Gith is, Gith is enough, because yeah. they're both. Well, I named them both. Yeah, correct. Uh, so it's three all, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Race consisting of humanoid elephants. Uh, Loxodon. Correct. Yeah, I was never going to get that. I was thinking, like, <laughs> Elephantia, but then I was like, no. <clears throat> Race yeah. consisting of groups of living beings, typically in tribe form, in remote forests, spending their days in harmony with the woods. Oh, my God. Can you, can you repeat the question? <laughs> Race consisting of groups of beings that typically live in tribes in remote forests, spending their days in harmony with the woods. Is this a playable race? Absolutely. Fuck. Uh... <laughs> Uh, what, what is gnome? <laughs> like, <laughs> Not correct. Bell, do you have an answer? Have no idea. No. The answer was Furbolg. Uh, oh. And with that, uh, with four points for Bell and three points for yeah, I could do this all day. Bell wins this, uh, this review round. You're, just, you're, you know, there's some, some <sighs> random facts of just core D&D knowledge. You guys didn't do too bad. You answered seven out of the, what, ten questions? Like, that's, 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 not, that's not bad. It's not bad. All right. Good job. Good job. That was close. That was a close one. Closer than I thought it would be. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I know. Like I know. You got it. I feel like you got to have like Soko and Koiba, or mm, Soko and Ethan maybe, because this gonna be. That's gonna be. Yeah, Soko possesses Ooh. a lot of like just D and D knowledge. Yeah. And so does Ethan. And so does Koiba. I think. Yeah. To exactly. Be yeah. Because the freaking nerds. Yeah, but I'm gonna definitely yeah. like if I know that the two people that I'm gonna have as guests are fucking D and D nerds, I'm gonna make the questions a lot harder. <laughs> nah, I'm a loser. Yeah, that's why you know a lot about D and D. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, with that, I think uh, we're good to call it. This was uh, Dungeon Discourse for this week. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, we hit a thousand on the Charity Select campaign within the first week. Let's go, Pog Champ. We're doing it, baby. We're fucking doing it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday for episode 12 of Dungeon Select. Good night, everybody. Nice. You used the buzzer after all. Good job. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Peace out. Good night, losers. Good and night, guys. Gamers. <laughs> Did you say, and epic gamers? <laughs> yes. <laughs>